What is a commitment device and how can it help you? This is an interesting idea. It comes out of psychology and as part of chapter 14 in Atomic Habits. If you haven't read this book, it's well worth getting if you're at all interested in having a better body, having a better relationship with God, having a better relationship with your partner and kids and getting business results. Any of those apply, this book is well worthwhile. But chapter 14 is called How to Make Good Habits Inevitable and bad habits impossible. And it gives the story of Ulysses and uh, he ties himself to the boat so he can hear the siren song, but not sail the boat into the rocks. And this idea is a commitment device that by making it a, making a decision today, now, that prevents actions from being able to be taken later on. Now, this is not foolproof. This is not foolproof. Typically, it is possible to bypass these commitment devices if you're really keen. But overall, the idea is that I will take some kind of action now. We'll take some kind of action that will, will block off future actions that we don't want. The classic for me is the two people that I seem to be. The one who sets the alarm the night before and the one who wakes up. These are two very different Toms. And I really have to work towards knowing that the Tom that wakes up in the morning needs to have everything smoothly flowing. That the Ugg boot, we're in winter right now, that there's Ugg boots next to the bed, uh, the, the tea is already ready to go, that there's not, it doesn't, kettle doesn't have to be filled. These are all ways to get out of bed and actually make that alarm clock count. The worst habit potentially one of the worst habits is to allow that alarm clock to go on snooze because then it becomes very difficult. Sometimes I listen to one of my sons counting down the exit from the hot shower and he got into a little habit of taking, doing the countdown and not turning it off. And I was like, mate, be very careful with that habit. It's better that you do not count down than you count down and then don't take the action that that was meant to lead to. That is a very bad habit. I have personally run into that extensively trying to jump into cold water. Three, two, one, don't jump. Don't jump, this is bad. This is a terrible habit to be into. But nonetheless, coming back to our commitment devices, what are some examples of these? So one would be a timer that turns off the internet at a set amount of time, leaving the wallet at home so that you're not able to buy something when you're out. This has obviously become a lot more difficult with the advent of the ubiquitous mobile phones. Now that our wallets are in our phones, pretty much got to leave everything at home. But that also opens up for difficulties around communication. Perhaps this is the benefit of the rise of the dumb phones that literally I can take a communication device that is limited to just being able to make a phone call and plus or minus a text message. And that's it. And that allows me to leave my wallet at home, leave my phone at home so I cannot buy things. These are all very interesting ideas that by doing, taking that action, having the timer, perhaps even going onto a ban list, James speaks of ban lists. I'm not going to be able to go into the, the pub. I'm not going to be able to go into the casino. I'm going to put myself on a ban list because I know that there's a couple of different versions of myself. One that in that moment will make that bad choice in inverted commas, bad choice, or one that leads to outcomes that eh, I'm not really that excited for. So this is a very interesting idea. And he goes on to list um, a particularly powerful versions of habits where you can invest a small amount up front. We can put an amount of money in and fundamentally change that habit. Examples would be a better pillow, a better mattress, filtering email, turning off social media accounts, that these, these habits allow space for the work that we must do to come into our lives. And James describes that. He gave the wonderful example of the author Victor Hugo in the 1800s 
asking his assistant to lock all of his clothes away and just left him with a shawl. And over the course of the next six months wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And it's almost certain that if he had been allowed access to his clothes, he would not have written that book. But by limiting access, he couldn't leave the house. He's forced into just staying there and writing the book. That meant that the book got done. All right, that's all I got for you. Go grab the book. Go check out James Clear's site. Go check out some habits. If you need some help with systems, which are extremely close to habits, they they just have perhaps more powerful effects if you happen to be running a business, then head over to systemio.dev. Thanks for tuning in today. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. See you next time.